Welcome to OBS. This is the homepage that you should open to. If you've used it before, it'll already have stuff in this that it saves to your account once you log into this computer. But if this is the first time you're using it, it's going to be blank over here. And this is the important part. This is where we create all the magic. So firstly, we've got a blank screen. I can put my hand in front of the camera. Nothing's going to happen. See, there's no audio showing on this. So I need to start adding some things. And all of that's going to be under sources. So if I go to this little plus, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add audio. So I'm going to say audio input. For the sake of it, I'm just going to call it audio. It doesn't actually matter what you call it. OK. It's going to give me a big list of options. For this one, what we want to use is line three and four. If you forget, you can look at the little equalizer control box to your left, and you'll see that the two microphones are plugged into channel three and four. So we go, yep, and you'll immediately see at the bottom now, as I'm talking, you can see those equalizer bars moving, so the microphone is actually picking something up. An important check. If that isn't moving, you've picked the wrong microphone or it's not working. Then I just click OK. I now have a microphone input. From here, I obviously want some video. So I'm going to go add. I'm going to look for video capture. In this case, I'm just going to call it video. Again, it doesn't actually matter. You can call it anything you want. OK. And it's going to give me some options. The one I want, the camera that we've got, again, it's written on the back. So if you forget, it's right next to you, is the Panacast. And as soon as I select it, you'll see it switches to green. I can see my beautiful little hands if I put it in front of the camera. So that is good to go. If you want a background, whether that's picture or video, I'm still going to add it. So in this case, I can add an image. I can also add a video background. So I can add a media source, for example. Um, most often people are using static images. So like just a news report background or something like that. So I'll click image. In this case, I'm just going to call it my background logo so I can know which one's which. OK, it's going to ask me to browse. I'm going to use this one. And when I say OK, you see it's in red. So this allows me to resize to whatever size I want. And in this case, I'm going to resize it and then just drag it to the middle so that it's a centralized logo. And then if I just click off the screen, or click somewhere else, it loses the red. One thing you'll notice now, in the order that I've done it, if I go stand in front of the camera and try and record something, the image is in front of me. It's not actually green screen. So there's two things that I have to do. Firstly, I need the video in front of the logo. So I just click and drag it up, and you'll see it's reordered it. But now, I can't see my logo. I can see me again, but no logo. That's because we haven't added the green screen effect, the chroma key. So to do that, I need to right click this video option. And then I want to look for filters and click that. I can do audio video filters or I can do effect filters. That's what we want down here, the effect. If I click plus, I look for chroma key. There it is. It defaults to chroma key. That's fine. OK. You see it's gone black. Now I've got my logo, and now I stand in front, you can see me, and the logo is in the background. So that's twofold. One, because I've added the chroma key, and two, because this background logo here is behind, or it's below on the list, the video file. If it's in front, it'll still have the green screen effect, but I'll still be behind the image. So I'll show you what that looks like. If it was in the wrong order, be like this. See my hand, but it vanishes behind the object, so it's not truly green screening. So I'll slide it that way. Good to go. Another feature that I've seen that can be quite useful is because you can't pause and change things as, as you go, but you might want multiple backgrounds. The best way to do that is to then say, well, let's add another one. I'll just say this will be background number two. And I'll pick something different. Let's just go. Sure, let's go this. And this is going to be the second logo that I transition to. So I'm going to introduce myself. Then I'm going to talk about my logo. Again, I want it to be above. And in this case, you'll see that background number two is in front of background number one. So I cannot see it or I cannot see the background. That's okay. I'm actually going to drag it 
down a little bit. Let me edit you. There we go. Oop. I'll make it a little bit bigger so I can't see any of it then. Great. What I can now do is when I press start recording and I'm actually filming, I might start with this screen and I'll go like blah, blah, blah. Hey, everyone. Video in front, Mr. React. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is blah, 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 blah. When I want to switch from backgrounds, the little eyeballs here can turn the camera on and off, but it could also turn backgrounds off. So if I turn off by clicking the eyeball, you see, I no longer see that. I can see the one behind it. I can keep going and I've now got my background. If I don't want any background, I just want black and I'm going to keep talking. I can just turn it off or I can turn the first one back on and there I go. So I can do the same thing with videos. Um, I can do multiple images and I can just transition. So the person behind the, the scenes manning the computer as you're recording would just be going, okay, next scene, click this one on or click this one off, sorry, and then click this one on. Or if they are stacked neatly, you just go off, off, off as you work your way through. You could do the same thing with video. So I could be recording and then click the eyeball and I vanish and then make me appear again for whatever reason. But that's kind of the main features. That's how you add images. The chroma key feature was filters. Audio we've set up. And then from there, I just go start recording. It'll start. When I'm done, I click stop recording. And then you can see down here, it saves it automatically to your video file. So the reason you log into this computer with your account is it syncs it to your OneDrive. So it saved that video straight into my OneDrive in the video folder. And then I can just basically log off, walk away, and my file is with me in my OneDrive anywhere I go. So that is OBS Basics 101. So what do you think of the opening credits? Well, I can't believe Sir Steven Spielberg, the grooviest filmmaker in the history of cinema, is making a movie about my life. Having said that, I do have some thoughts. Really? Uh, my friend here thinks it's fine the way it is.